Hello everyone, this is episode 6 of Sky Project from Scratch. Uh, don't worry, it's still Advent of Code, we're gonna get through all the days that we still have left. I just needed a, a break from all of that. Some of the tasks were really challenging and kind of exhausting, so I'm hoping for this to be a sort of way to get back into YouTube. Uh, recently I reached 2000 subs, so thank you to all of you who subscribed, uh, either now or before. I hope you're enjoying the show. And uh, yeah, so this is Scala Project from Scratch. If you haven't seen the previous parts, don't worry, uh, you'll catch up. But essentially what we're doing here is uh, I'm working on a project that we initialized in the first, in the very first episode. Um, this is going to be a fake Docker clone. And uh, yeah, let, let's just get to it. So in the last episode, we implemented a basic interpreter for build commands. If I remember well, this was almost two months ago. So it definitely took some time uh, for me to get back to it, but we're back here again. Uh, so what we did was uh, implement this interpreter uh, algebra. So basically a function from a, a build. We also, I think we did build resolution, uh, but basically going from a build to a system state. So uh, this would involve folding over the commands that we got in the build, uh, starting from the initial, the initial state. Uh, the initial like build base uh, and yeah just just folding in here i'm using a traverse but it's essentially the same thing um, performance wise it's not but there's you know much more difficult stuff to worry about here than performance um, and yeah so this is this is the interpreter uh, then this we we also got some property based tests uh, in the last episode uh, and finally we have the real deal which would be that's not it. Uh, I might not even find the references because of, uh, yeah, because of how metals works. But yeah, here we are. So interpret is used here, and this is it. So first we have uh, the build resolution, like as part of the whole build command, uh, for which we have the definition here in the executor. Uh, the executor interface is, by the way, shared by both the server and the client. For those of you who don't uh, don't know that. Um, so this is the client. The client currently is just like a, there's not much going on here. It's basically just a, a client side imp implementation of this, uh, which just forwards to the to the endpoint. Not not much happening there. And we haven't really focused on the client so far. Uh, we will, uh, at some point we will, but uh, I think there's some more interesting stuff for now to, for us to work on. Mm. So we have the build part and we have the run part. Uh, so in reality, the run part only works for empty builds. So for builds that we um, didn't change, or we just inserted something and and removed it again, uh, like immediately immediately after, or removed everything, uh, this would result in an empty build, and uh, and then an, an empty system, and we would get an empty hash, and then we are able to run that. Uh, so there's also the step of, of build resolution. So if the build is an empty build, that's the only special case that we support currently. Um, if it's an empty build, then we resolve its image to an empty system. And that's basically it. Like we resolve the build to, to this, to resolve build with the, this empty system. Um, and then we resolve the commands by just converting them to this other model. Uh, nothing really happening here. Uh, I think this will pretty much stay the same for the entirety of its lifetime, of its existence, uh, but uh, the resolution of the build will definitely have to change. As a matter of fact, I think this is what I want to work on next. So we will implement some sort of build resolver, maybe with a way to actually insert a build. Uh, so that we might actually have to do some like hashing algorithm first, uh, but yeah, we'll get to that when we get um, through the interface. So yeah. Let's get to it. Uh, so actually, before we do that, uh, I said we would do this in, in the beginning of every episode. We will go through the pull requests from Scott Stewart. So November 22 is, I think, when I published the previous episode, uh, something around that. Uh, it's, it's January the 8th, uh, so it's been a while. Let's just get through these. So some of the PRs have been opened in the meantime and closed because later versions came out and uh, Scott Stewart just closed this previous PRs, uh, but yeah, some of these are just 
as old as the video. And also we got this whole uh, log4j vulnerability in the meantime. Uh, then logback also happened to have some, uh, like, well, some vulnerabilities were discovered. So I also have a PR for that, uh, even though, you know, this isn't deployed anywhere. So it's pretty much safe. Uh, so yeah, so what I'm going to do, um, I think I'm just going to go through all of these and... Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if I should just merge them here or... I think I'll actually create a new, a new branch and try to merge all of that. Uh, so let me just pull and also uh, fetch the... Okay, we don't have that. Right, so this is a new machine. I don't remember if I did that before. But uh, I need to add a remote for this uh, repository. Um, yeah, that's, that seems very convenient. Uh, okay, let's try this. Okay, that, that did work. Uh, so I'm going to call this update 2201. I still can't get used to 22. Um, it's strange. So yeah, so we get cuts effect. Uh, I'm going to look at the release notes and also the version diff. Uh, but the version diff is going to be huge. And we're not going to see much here. And in here, there's more interesting stuff. I don't think we're using much of what we got here, but... You know. Um, there's some performance improvements, some... Oh yeah, there's, oh yeah, we got allocated case. I'm really happy about that. Uh, and that was actually my idea. Like, well, idea, maybe someone suggested it before, uh, but I I really did want that. And I started some work, even in the times of Cats Effect 2. So uh, that was fun. Uh, I, I'm glad that it's here and I didn't have to finish the, the work. Um, yeah, there's this fiber dumps uh, since 3.3.0, which we didn't have before. They look kind of like this, uh, in in this uh, this uh, shape. You can also get this as data and transform it in a different way, I think. Um, also, better fiber to string. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. Um, and beans and so on improves uh, support for like mocking time in your tests when you have I/O. And yeah, a bunch of stuff. Tracing on Scala.js. This was a huge release, actually. Um, but yeah, I didn't really touch any of that. So I think we are in, on 3.2.9. Yeah, that checks out. So yeah, so we, we have all this. And the tests are still passing because we don't have many tests. Um, yeah, so, so better to string this. I think the only change here would be uh, supporting more Scala versions. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about that much. This fixes a vulnerability, but we're not using logback much. Uh, certainly, yeah, we, we haven't been affected by this. Uh, SPT, uh, I think we can go straight to 161. Uh, I'm actually going to do this uh, immediately. Um, let's try to... That's everything. So the reason why Scassior didn't open a PR for 1.6 yet is that it first tries to update the patch versions and when there are no more, it will only then start updating the uh, the, the minor versions. Uh, so yeah, this was expect to be expected. Uh, maybe we can get rid of the log. Maybe we shouldn't, uh, but I don't really mind currently, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, so SBT, I'm going to close this and hope that Scassier doesn't open a PR while I'm doing this. And then we have Tapir, uh, probably a minor update. Looks like it. So I'm going to look at the release notes of all the releases. Okay, great. There's a milestone for a new, new version. And that's going to be interesting. Okay, so this doesn't exist. Let's see, um, yeah, probably not much change. I don't see anything that would impact us. 
So yeah, we can definitely take that one. But there isn't much for us here. Uh, it's for us. I think we are on point six. Yeah. So just one release. Just a maintenance release. And now you have to upgrade to SCAD 310. Fortunately, we are already there. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. So we have HTTP for us. I'm unit. Um, honestly, I'm not. Okay, I, I'm gonna check, but real quick, because it's just one version. Yeah, just updates and. Ooh, nest effects. Some some feather related thing. But oh, this isn't even ma I mean, main. It's just a unit uh, for cat effect, uh, which I think we might be moving away from. Like at some point, we'll, maybe we'll use Weaver. Um, recently, I've been using Weaver more. There was a question on one of the recent episodes, uh, and yeah, I, I think we should try out Weaver here. Um, SPT get have auctions. If this just works, I'm just gonna take it. I'm not really interested in uh, the change log. By the way, there isn't a link here. Don't know why. Um, Scav and T, yeah, just formatting stuff. Okay, so I'll just take them all, but in a single merge. Hold on, I have to. Just my computer. So these new Macs, like at least in the European version, they have a separate button for emoji. Like uh, it's on the FN button. When you just tap it, it will open this window, which is super annoying because I already had a shortcut, like control command space does that. Like, I don't need a separate button for this. So I'm probably gonna remap it to something else. But also it's so easy to misclick because I often just try to do FN and then I end up not doing it. So uh, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Also, there's like a whole button for dictation, which I've never used on a, on a laptop. Like, I don't think this is very useful. It's not even working here. So, so yeah. Let's just take all the PRs. Um, And this is going to be from Seward and um, Cut Effect. Now, better to string. Right back. So I hope you're having a great new year uh, and you had a great holiday season. And in general, that when, whenever you're watching this, you're having a great day. Um, and that you sleep well, like that's, uh, that's my, my, uh, the best New Year's wish that I can give you. Like, not wish, but, uh, yeah, I guess wish is the correct word. So yeah, I wish you plenty of good sleep. Uh, it's really important for you. Maybe this is the moment when you realize that you've been sleeping like five hours a day for the past five years, and you should fix it. Uh, what did I just merge? Like, this is this is what, what happens when I try to talk. Um, we did HTTP4S. Did I do top here? I did. Now I'm unit cast effect. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm not even sure why there's so many branches open on in here. Like some of these are very stale. Um, it looks like Stuart might not be deleting branches when closing PRs. Uh, yeah, someone might have to look at this. Uh, we have a conflict, another one. So yeah, point seven. Okay, so we did a unit. Uh, 
and scala and t three one two okay so i'm just gonna run the tests again and i'm going to merge it directly to main Let's make sure I'm still recording. Okay, cool. So yeah, it, it looks right. Uh, I'm just gonna, why did I shut down SBT? Um, and we're there, so I'm gonna push it. Hopefully all the PRs will be closed now. Okay, it worked. Uh, if you didn't know, GitHub can do that. It can, so if you merge the PR manually, it will find out. Because there's, uh, as long as there's references to the PRs here, or to the branches at least, and it will show up as merged, like uh, cause effect. Yep. Uh, so I removed the branch and I pushed. I think that's it. So let's import the build into metals. And yeah, we're gonna start working on on this new thing. So I'm gonna. I'm probably not gonna keep an SPT instance open. Let's just get away from the browser. All right. So uh, we have the interpreter thing, which is a server side only thing. And I'm gonna add the resolver next, but first I think I start with the, like in here, then I can use metals to split it out as a separate file. Mm. Yeah, I was wondering if there's anything new that I've found in the meantime that I could show you. Oh yeah, I think I know. Um, so there's this type of diffs um, setting in Scala. I'm not sure if it's implemented in Scala 3 yet. Uh, probably not. Uh, so yeah, let's have like a type mismatch. I, I just want to check this. So list, I want like a list of string, but I'm going to give it a another list, which is a list of int. Let's see what the error is. Okay, so this is decent. So the defaults, like when you add the v type this flag and you have metals, uh, normally it would be very nice if you did just plain text output for the errors, the type errors. It would be something like list in both lines and then like, or, or like just one line with like list and then int is not string, something like this. Uh, so this looks nice in plain text because it's going to be with colors, like not plain text, right? But outside the ID, this looks all right. Um, actually, I think I can show you. Let's do it in Scala CLI. Um, I was going to make a video about this, but I don't know if I will, but uh, we'll see. Uh, there's a great video on Scala CLI on uh, Vlad's channel on uh, Dev Inside You. I'll try to put a link in here, uh, but I'm going to use that. So we are going to use uh, Scala 2, 13, 7, and using option V type diffs, I think. And let's try to run this. Okay, so this is what you get, right? So it doesn't look good in in here. I think this is bloop output, or maybe just what Scala CLI is doing to format the output, but it's not showing the colors in the error message. And when you have a large type, something more complicated than a list of int string, uh, it really does get very annoying. So I think SBT to Polkat, uh, this version still turns that on by default. So I'm now disabling it in every other project uh, because it's just so annoying. Uh, it's not the fault of the authors, it's just that it was made uh, with more more you know textual output in mind. It's just like a combination of decisions, design decisions of you know Bloop or or Scala CLI, whichever is doing this. 
and the compiler, because the compiler tries to output colors, but they are being stripped uh, in, in this case. This is without the flag, uh, which I think is better. Like you can actually visually compare this much more easily in this case. Um, anyway, that was a side, side quest. Uh, we're back to this. So I'm just going to focus on the actual work now. Um, so yeah, we have this resolve step here. I'm going to move it to a different algebra. In case you missed this, like usually when I design these kind of things, uh, when I when I write this kind of code, uh, working with Douglas Final Style, uh, basically polymorphic effects, uh, I would have the trait, the interface, uh, next to the implementation. The implementation would be here in like dev instance or whatever. This might be implicit depending on whether it's like unique for the type or not. But um, in here, it's not really possible for the executor because the executor interface is in a different module. The purpose of this module is to be shared by both the client and the server projects. And then we also have like the E2E uh, project, which is not really E2E tests, uh, if you think about it. But that was the best name I came up with uh, on the spot. And it's like testing the compatibility of these two. Uh, so we need both implementations. Anyway, so executor is like an, an exception to this whole thing. And we have server-side executor, which has the same, the same exact interface. And the same goes for client-side executor. This also exposes an executor of F. So the same type. It's just created in a different way. But yeah, this is it. Um, so. Here we're not going to do that. We're going to actually extract something from the server side executor, but it's going to be just a server side thing only. Actually, I think like eventually we might not even have this kind of split. Like the server and client distinction is going to be purely uh, like where do we make the calls to the registry from? Uh, for example, with Docker, like imagine you have a Docker, you usually have these on the same host when you are developing. Uh, you just have Docker on your machine and you are. Uh, using uh, CLI most likely. And the CLI doesn't talk to like Docker Hub. The the, the server, the, the daemon talks to Docker Hub. So technically you can have these on two different machines and then the daemon talks to the Docker Hub and that's where you have to authenticate and so on. Uh, like go through any proxies and, and, and such. Uh, but technically there's nothing stopping the, you know, like no technical blockade, I think, you know, I, I haven't looked at the internals, but uh, at least from the mm, intuition, there wouldn't be anything stopping you from doing this from the client directly without an extra process. So I think here we might actually end up with an architecture that allows us to choose where we want to make the connections to our storage or whatever uh, from, like whether you want to do it through the server for like a common uh, like like a proxy, like treat the the, the, the server as a uh, a reverse proxy, I guess, um, or not. Maybe you just want to do it from the client, like straight up from from the client, talk to Redis or whatever we're gonna use for the uh, the registry. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, far away in the future. We can always move files around. Uh, just some rambling about the architecture, and yeah. Uh, I still do want to have a resolver, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get one. I'm going to just call it a resolver for now. Uh, we're gonna worry about uh, bad names and the consequences later. Uh, maybe this will also be instructive if we have to rename this at some point. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna take a build and return a resolved build. Not much um, changing from the previous uh, implementation. And also, I'm going to do an apply method. So I'm, I'm going to try to not type on the bottom of the screen. I know it's not very readable. Um, that's not the syntax. Yeah, let's try this. And also a def instance. Okay, this is dangerously close to what I had before. So it looks like GitHub Copilot has already stolen my code. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's try this. Yeah, it's it's very close. Like I still need some uh, instances. So what I need, I definitely need applicative. Um, I need applicative throw, and that might actually be it. Oh, this doesn't make sense. This is the same method, so I can just make this public, 
and require applicative throw. Yeah, so this is compiling. I'm not sure if it's the exact same thing. Uh, I wanted to actually just copy paste from here. Um, so we need empty system, which is copied here. Yeah, just to be sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna copy paste this again. It's probably the same string, like the same exact string. Yeah, up to white, white space and the private modifier here. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, soon we're gonna be out of jobs. At least I am because of this. Um, just kidding, but yeah, maybe. So we're gonna take a resolver, but first uh, I'm gonna instantiate one here in the definition of the module. Uh, so resolver, yeah, I'm not even gonna type this. Uh, so in the whole, like I, I've, I mentioned this on Twitter recently, like GitHub Copilot is so nice in some things, like it doesn't have to write perfect code. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what it is, it's the thing that does my completions, it's AI based uh, and basically stealing code from GitHub, like from everyone's repositories and just remixing it. So you may not like it, you may not use it, but I think it's a great thing to have in your toolbox when you can just, you know, delegate the boring work to someone else. It's like you had an intern uh, and you didn't want to give them shitty jobs. So you just use AI to do the dirty work and you give the intern some actual uh, useful stuff. Yeah, it's like you have an intern in your computer. With all respect to, to interns. Um, so we're going to have a resolver here. And instead of this resolve, I'm going to call resolver. Yep. Also, uh, you'll probably notice that we should be getting like warnings on unused uh, definitions. We're not because this is SCAL3. Uh, I will keep, keep complaining about this in every episode, I think. So we definitely don't need this. We don't need this. But I think we need at least empty system and yeah, both of these. That's not perfect, uh, but I'm gonna say it's all right, acceptable. Um, so yeah, the question is whether we need actually resolver or maybe this should be like a registry. So in the registry, we would be able to resolve a build or create one. So what do you need to do to, re to resolve a build? You'll need to resolve uh, the commands. Eventually these might include like some hash of, a, of an image. Um, yeah, currently it's kind of the same thing. Like we just resolve, we have just a read part, but eventually we'll have to insert stuff, uh, at least for resolving the build base, that's the most important part right now because there could be like a hash that you're referencing. We could have something like this. So uh, server side executor could be depending on uh, resolver and, and something like that for like um, yeah, the interpreter, uh, the, the resolver would uh, just use something like a Redis client. You know, in the future, it'll, we would have like swappable backends, but I think like the resolution logic for a whole build is not going to change between backend like storage implementations. So it could very well be a separate piece of logic, but maybe it doesn't deserve a whole service, like this kind of, you know, trait. Maybe this could be like the whole resolve method could be just made of composing uh, some abstractions methods or it could be you know just a, something like this also by exposing a high level interface like this as a as a trait and not just as a method we ensure that we can implement uh, this in a specific way for like testing but i'm not even sure that's that's good anymore let's just let's just use this and uh 
make sure that everything works still and then we'll Oops. yeah this is not what i wanted to run um so before i was recording this video i, I run this command and now this is my top <laughs> bloop command so we're gonna connect the bloop again okay not this let's try to run the test of uh root all the dependencies So green, okay. Uh, so yeah, so this could be one path or we could go for like a server side executor uh, to resolver to like registry and only then like for this client. Registry client. So yeah, you know, keep it simple. I think we should keep it simple. I'm gonna just stick with the resolver and then we're gonna figure it out. But I'm definitely going to have to write this like store method here. So like store hash, uh, something like this. Um, forget it for now. We will need this and we also need, like it would be nice to uh, get by hash. Also like hash and like value, whatever. Um, yeah, I think this would take like a build or a system state. Yeah, something like this. It's hard to tell right now. So I'm just gonna keep the resolver here. I'm gonna commit this and then we're gonna see what we need next. Um, this is the directory created by Scassi Live, by the way. It's got TLI, let me just uh, give you a reference. This is what I was using before to run the, the thing, uh, to run the 213 code without opening a, a new SBT project. Uh, it's it's a, a pretty nice thing. Um, and we're probably gonna have a video about this at some point, but for now, go to last channel. So yeah. So now that I have a new interface, I could actually, I probably should, I should have done this before. Just create a new file. And also we should start testing uh, some things. Uh, let me see what what we're doing here for the, interp the interpreter. So this is not related to resolver. Uh, the server side executor is using both, but it's not mm, it's not part of the interpreter's dependencies. Uh, yeah, I think it's time. I think it's just time to start doing builds and you know inserting the results. So yeah, let me. Um, try to think through it and actually like work through it. So the whole point of interpretation is that we have a, a resolved build, which means that the base is resolved. And basically that's it because the, the commands are uh, already like fully resolved. We just need to transform them to a different data type. That's identical in structure. Uh, eventually there might be some hashes in, in there for us to resolve, but they aren't so we go from a resolved build to a system state and this has no notion of hashes which means that it has to do the work every time so it's like you know an actual fetch call and we will be caching this by the means of a of a resolver or like a whole i don't know maybe we, we call this a cache uh we'll see So once you get the same build twice, yeah, I think we, if you get the same build twice and it succeeds the first time, you shouldn't have to run it again. Yeah, the interpreter won't be used twice. So we could have a, like a test interpreter that records how many times it was uh, used to, to build something. 
and verify that it does it only once as a test. Uh, I kind of don't like this because this is like mocks and spies, but uh, we'll see. So this is this is the ultimate goal, like caching this, and also like getting getting rid of this. So going from a system state to a hash is definitely something that we need. So let's do something like get a hash. We provide the system state, and we want a hash back. So currently, this is it. I can do this and we need to implement this with some sort of storage. Yeah, I think this could be pretty much transparent to the executor, like how we actually get to, um, like we, we just provide this as the implementation, but something else should actually take care of um, doing the caching and so on. Like we can say that, hey, you, you should cache this, but uh, the exact details will be provided by th this other interface. Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Um, I'm not even sure like resolver should be involved here directly, but we'll see. Because if you provide the same build twice, like even here, do we really do we really need to resolve it twice uh, before we? talk to an actual like cache yeah now that i think about this this could be like too much caching like caching entire builds instead of caching the the layers or the results uh, so i'm probably gonna just cache the uh, the interpret part so resolver is staying like resolve build is gonna it's gonna say and also this like resolving by a hash these two things will live in the same module i think but I'm not sure it's going to be Resolver. They're probably going to use the same underlying abstraction, but I'm not so sure yet. Okay, let's see what the next step could be. So I, I want to get rid of this in Resolver. Let's see what happens if I get rid of it. So we just have a check that the build is empty. What this really checks is that uh, the oh this is this is very weird yeah the build doesn't have to be empty all we need is um the base to be empty uh, like the base uh, yeah this is an empty image that's that's all i need um i want to see any tests that we might have for this this is using an empty build I think it doesn't have to be an empty build. Okay, I guess it does because this gives us a hash. Okay, so it could be an empty build or a build that inserts something and removes it. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I'm just gonna start coding um, at this point. So let's just pretend that this is the case. Like we need the build base to be empty. Um, And guard empty system, yeah. I'll just keep this. So this is gonna be the system, and the commands are gonna stay. So I think we just need to take care of this. So like uh, resolve system build uh, base, or not even that, but. Uh, Yeah, actually, just just this mm, resolve state. Mm. Okay, so this is uh, just the same kind of code uh, refactored, extracted uh, to a separate function. Um, yeah, there isn't much that the resolver would be doing here, but this, like looking up the, you know, like look up state, something like this would be pretty 
tricky um, to do in the same abstraction, I think. So, okay, yeah, I'm gonna re replace this with a pattern match. Uh, so, if this is a build base empty image, we are going to return empty system like straight away, um, pure F. But if it's a uh, image reference uh, of a hash, now the fun begins. So I'm, I'm just gonna do it here. I'm just gonna take a you know a second for the storage. We're gonna do it all in this layer, and then we're gonna see where else it has to be, and then we'll extract some new abstraction. Um, probably not the best way to do this, but it's gonna be faster than doing nothing. So I'm going to have a resource here because we will be needing a, an effect and at that point you might just have a resource. So I'm going to have a, a, a ref.make constraint here. Uh, ref f of and we're gonna have a gold old map. This map is gonna be a map from hash to um, system state. Uh, is that it? What's the result build? Yeah, it has a system state. So it's gonna be a map of hash and system state. Um, and it's gonna be an empty one at the beginning. Uh, to resource, gonna need some syntax for that. And map. So it's gonna be our memory, or just map, or just ref. And there we go, this would compile, but this doesn't. So this whole module is gonna to have to be a resource now. And I wonder if they fixed this bug, probably not. Um, so this is what I wanna do. Yeah, month throw, uh, ref, make. And this again is not uh, gonna work here because we need a, a resource. I mean, it is resource, so we're gonna have to flat map on it. And this is gonna be executor. That's that's all. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's next? So we need to do this lookup. I'm just gonna get it from the map. Um, and if it's not present, we're actually gonna flat map here. Uh, if it's not present, uh, we're gonna fail. Now let's see what I did with errors. So errors would be in the model, not this one, in the shared model. We have error unknown base, uh, which I think is fitting here. Uh, and this would be just hash. Okay, we don't have syntax because this is not a not a mono throw. Now it's going to be fine. Also, this should be. Uh, Star. Yeah. Uh, so what we're doing here, we're just getting the whole map and then doing uh, a lookup in it. Uh, also, you could be using something like a ref map. Uh, not this one. Uh, the one from. I think this would be in the in Dave inverse. No, maybe it's on uh, Chris's uh, account. No, okay. Map ref. It's map ref. And it would be here. Yep. So yeah, there's like an optimized version of, of ref for, for maps. Uh, yeah, not much documentation here. But yeah, there's this. Let's look at the packages. 
Yeah, I guess this is just it. Uh, so it's a map from a key to a rough. Not sure if that's what I really need, but um, get and set key value, set key value. Yeah, it might actually work. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, this is simple enough. Like we don't need to do anything more complicated than that. Um, so these, I think. We, we will need to keep these somewhere. For example, here, uh, the hash might go to like some hasher thing, but system state uh, as the empty system has to stay here. Um, for now, this is the owner of the empty system state uh, definition. And we'll have to basically return that every time we get an empty image uh, to, to resolve. Okay. Mm. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to split this into a map and then a flat map. This way I can separate out this later much more easily just by moving this to, like, you know, an actual lookup method. Mm. Actually, I'm going to call, call this uh, resolve base because why not? And now this is failing probably because there is no ref make for either. Um, how about sync IO? So there is sync IO, and this is a resource, which makes sense, but maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Um, okay, I'm still gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna use this resource here. Oh, I have to use it twice. Uh, exec R. Is this a thing? Steve dot build empty. Sorry, my phone is charging. Um, yeah. Well, this is. This is not going to be a write anymore. Uh, so I think now we need this like cast effect uh, suite and we'll probably need to, uh, can I do IO of pure, like IO just like that. Yeah, this was sync IO, let's just do IO. Uh, sync IO is sometimes inconvenient. Build.empty, is that another thing? Empty lowercase. Let's run this. Okay. Um, yeah, that wasn't it. So I'm actually going to run this. I think that was the point. Yeah, we also have assert IO. Hmm. Okay. We're going back. <laughs> I thought I was better. Just like this. There we go. Okay, uh, so we have a new thing. We have started actually looking up in the in the ref in the in the, uh, in the resolver. So we have a ref here, um, but we're not actually putting stuff into it. Arguably, if we had a hash for the empty image, which we do, uh, we could avoid this whole special case. Like, well, there's probably no point, but we don't even need to know what the empty system is. We could just look up by the empty hash. This could be, you know, just treated as an optimization. Uh, but the map would have to start with this state. And actually, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's a decent idea. Uh, so here's what I mean. Although it is going to be more inconvenient when we add some actual storage, uh, but it's going to make it easier for something else to be like the owner of the hashes uh, at some point. So empty hash, this is actually used. What? 
Oh, it's not. Yeah, because we directly referenced the empty image and the empty system. So, yeah, I'm going to create a new method. <laughs> That's going to be this. Also, what, what if the... Hmm. Yeah, we would basically have to duplicate the whole thing here, like uh, get empty hash unknown base. Yeah, exactly. This is the problem, like empty hash. I probably don't want to have the special case here. Yeah, forget it. Let's just leave it at that. All right. Um, yeah, for now, let's just keep it this way. Okay. So, uh, we still cannot get rid of empty hash in here and in empty system. And also, let's put this back inside. Yeah, we still uh, kind of get rid of this, these two, um, because we have this get hash from a system state thing. Mm. Yeah, this is actually pretty, going to be pretty interesting. Like, how do we actually calculate the hash for a system? Um, we could do something like not very smart for starters and just come up with a random hash. Uh, or, you know, just use like a hash code of the system state value. Both would work. Uh, now I'm trying to figure out which one is the least problematic in the short term. I'm saying about the short term because in the long term we're gonna get rid of them both, whichever is gonna be. Yeah, I think we're gonna do UIDs for now. This would be the the idea. But I definitely don't want to have it here. Um, so I'm gonna temporarily put it put it here. Um, the thing is that this get hash thing has to be there. Let's see if this is the only place. So empty system. There's one in run. It would be nice to support both, but uh, yeah, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, this just begs for, um, you know, a single abstraction that goes like system state to hash and then hash to system state. It really depends on whether this is going to be deterministic or not, because if, if it is, then it cannot be like a random thing and it would have to live together with this. But if this is like arbitrary stuff and then we pass both system state and the hash to the thing that stores it, then we have this and like these two methods live together. So we can either have like three methods on a high level or two. Um, I think I'm gonna go with two for now, just so we can refactor this later. And yeah, let's put it here. Why not? Uh, so we're gonna have save, um, which is gonna take a system. No, it doesn't really feel like this is the right place, you know? But yeah, let's do it. System state and the hash. No, wait, we're gonna do the hash inside. So this is already going to have way too many responsibilities, I think, uh, which is kind of the point of this whole exercise to see how these things come up and how to get rid of that. Uh, because currently it is responsible for resolving the base. Um, so understanding what an empty image is, what an image reference is, and getting a system from that, from a hash or an empty system. And it does so by looking up in the storage uh, because we have nothing else. So if it cannot be resolved, we just fail. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, that's reasonable. Uh, we're going to use the same thing later for um, run, I think. Yeah, so probably like, exposing like a resolve hash would be better than resolve base or resolve build. Yeah, I'm gonna do like all of these and then we'll just split out some of the methods into a more low level uh, interface or same level, we'll see. So we're gonna have a system state and we're gonna generate the hash inside. This is gonna be f of hash. Uh, 
I'm just gonna stop it out for now. Probably here. Um, yeah, I was hoping for this. Okay. Um, now, how would we use this in the executor? Probably here. If this seems like the... No, wait, that's not it. <laughs> Although, it kind of is. Yeah, the thing is, if we don't... If we, if we actually allow building something twice, this will be overwriting the hash. Because it's not going to be deterministic. Um, okay, uh, we'll worry about this later. Yeah, let's let's um, get to the work. So get hash is kind of like produce hash, like is, we don't really deal with, uh, we're not gonna deal with where this is coming from. Like this is actually going to mutate the state, but this doesn't have to know that uh, yet. So I'm gonna talk to the resolver here. Save, just like that, and this goes away. Okay. Yeah, uh, so just gonna say that. Mm. So we resolve, we interpret, and then we say that seems uh, reasonable. Okay, I can't do a new line here. Do you see that? I. Yeah, it's not. Uh, the the scale of empty is not idempotent. Right, so then we have run. Um, just notice that we haven't implemented anything yet. <laughs> like I'm just creating methods and leaving them unimplemented. Uh, here we're gonna actually do a lookup, so maybe resolver f lookup um, hash. And yeah, I'm actually just gonna leave it at that. Um, yeah, to be honest, there isn't gonna be much here. So at this point, I think Resolver is like a useless abstraction, like what it was originally doing. The, this whole Resolve base uh, thing where with, you know, calling out to this method or, you know, to the ref. I think it just doesn't belong here. Like this could very well be here because now server side executor has almost no jobs. Like it's not even going to look at looking at these. It's, it's very thin. Um, so yeah, we'll probably get rid of it. But let's do look up first. So we have a hash and we want an f of system state. We're gonna, by the way, deal with like error handling much later. Okay. So look up, I think we already have. Um, this seems like it. Yeah, with a small difference. Like unknown base is. Uh, a very specific name of an error. It's, you know, this build base is unknown. Uh, so what I think we should rather have is a separate exception, which will expose from this, uh, but will be transforming like from lookup and will be transforming it for the purpose of resolve base. Uh, let's do it here. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it, it should be like in the shared model, like both of them. Maybe I know. Yeah, probably. I know hash. Yeah, let's try this. We can always customize later. So I'm just gonna copy all of this to here. And we're gonna use unknown hash. Here we're gonna use lookup um, hash. Um, not really. I I think this is the abstraction. Like this is the actual lookup that we need to have. So maybe like lookup internal for now. Eventually, this might be like a, a key value store method. I'm just gonna, yeah, do this. 
with uh, option here. And here we're going to use it. So look up internal. And here we also use look up internal. So you get to choose how you want to deal with this, or this option, this empty option. And I think this makes far more sense. Okay. So now we need to implement save, which means that we need to implement a, a random UID or something like this. And at this point, I would need to add another constraint because mana throw is not enough. We would need sync or something like uh, just UID. I can't remember if it's a part of... Yeah, it is. So it's already a part of cast effect. Uh, UID gen. Uh, I'm just going to use that. You know, we'll need to add some constraints here. And I think that's all. Uh, we go back to Resolver. So UID gen of F. Let's get a random UID. Um, or not? Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be a duplicate. So definitely not the perfect uh, way. But you know, we cannot really choose much and we're not supposed to look at this and look for duplicates already in the state that's kind of like cheating it would solve the purpose now i'm actually considering it yeah maybe for now we actually should so yeah uh, so we have this uid um and we'll do an atomic change on the ref this is why i generate the id first um we're gonna do modify and for once, I would like to write this myself without Copilot, so I'm just gonna... Uh, by the way, what's a hash? It's a vector of bytes. So, we're gonna start with the state, uh, with the map. Okay, I said I didn't want this. Disabling, yeah. Did it work? Absolutely not. Yeah, I have to click something. Uh, globally. I don't think it worked. Um, yeah, just like this. And can I switch it now? Probably not. Anyway, um, let's do it. So we have the map. And we'll need to return a map again and the hash. And the hash is actually the UID as bytes. Um, yeah, we can still do, uh, create it here. That's either that or the existing value. So I'm going to check uh, map. Um, we're going to have to do find. So this is going to be linear and not very efficient, but this is what we have. Uh, key value if value equals system. And this is going to be just a key. Um, collect first. Okay. Uh, so we have an option of hash, and if it's empty, I'm just going to inline this. So if it's empty, um, Yeah, I'm going to use option T. Mm. Yeah, we can do this now. So it's option T or else F. Get or else F. Yep. Not even F, like we have a hash. Uh, get or else, just like that. I don't even need option T. Uh, I was too, too quick here. <laughs> so we need like the new hash. And then we call this a hash. And yeah, we need to decide like whether we want to update the map or not. Or maybe we can just update it at all times. This isn't supposed to be optimal anyway, so uh, 
we'll have the new hash to the system. Yeah, something like this. So now the new hash, finally the, the meat and potatoes of it. Is that what you, you're supposed to say? I think. Uh, so we have a system state. Um, yeah, actually that doesn't matter. We have a UID. And is this a Java UID? I hope sure. It is, okay. So how do I turn that into bytes? I've uh, never actually done this. Um, hash code, node, parent version. It's serializable, so maybe just this. Yeah, it does have some bytes. Um, yeah, I've never done this, so. From string. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna do it to string. Um, Isn't that a thing? Yep. Or bloop. I was to connect to build server. So we're gonna take the, the UID string and we're gonna get the bytes of that. Uh, that's probably gonna be this version. The vector and this is gonna be a hash. And to be honest, it can be a val, because why not? And we can actually use hash here. And we can inline this. There we go. So now the hash is either the existing hash or the new hash turned into bytes. Um, we can actually do something like this. And this is going to be the same code. Okay, I think I like this one better. And yeah, so the save should be working now. Lookup should be working. I think we're all set in here. Empty system and empty hash are just special cases now. And honestly, I'm not even sure we need empty hash now. Why do I actually need it? I don't. Empty system is just empty system. Uh, although, if we ever run a build that results in an, an empty system, its hash is going to be different. So I think I actually have to put this into the map. So I'm gonna. Or special case it, but I don't want to I don't want it to be part of the resolver again. I want I would much rather it to be like closer to the map. So we will put this here. Now everything's broken. Of course, this is not supposed to be empty anymore. We have the ref, we have the lookup, uh, and also this empty system. So this is kind of an optimization that I think could be done by the the other thing as well. Uh, this is gonna be lookup internal. Like eventually, this is probably is gonna be a separate abstraction. Uh, it seems so. So I'm gonna do this again. Lookup internal hash, uh, like empty hash. And then, like some bizarre error. Um, impossible. Empty system image hash not found for empty system. Some things you, you just cannot express in the type system. We here we we could, but I I I don't know if I want a separate method somewhere for getting the the the, the state of an empty hash. Like I I think it it would be just a matter uh, of a like a pattern match. Well, not even a pattern match. Just treating this as a special value inside the function. A, a method. All right, this all should should compile and also work. Uh, if the tests are not passing, I'll be very mad. Looks like everything is fine. Uh, yeah, I think I would like to play around with all this. So I think I'll create a worksheet. 
I haven't used worksheets with um, Scala 3 much, but we'll see maybe they work better now. So what I really need is the service data executor. And I want it um, like the whole module. I'm going to use IO. We're also going to import cuts effect IO um, on safe implicits. Okay, the, the worksheet is doing well so far. Mm, and now we're going to use this. Actually, there's no actual resource in here, so I, I think I can do allocate it and do answer for sync on this. On this. Yep. And what is this? It's a tuple. So I'll just take the first part. By the way, what's the second part? It's IO unit. And it's just a, a complete IO, I, I think. Anyway, we have the executor. It's a weird type for sure. I'm just gonna call it executor of IO. Okay. I guess it's just a display display of that. So yeah. So exec, uh, I definitely want to build something. Um, let's take a build. And the build base empty image. Then some commands. Let's do uh, absurd. Hello world sounds apt. This is an IO, and I'm going to answer if I sync on this. It's gonna give us a different result every time. Yeah, so different set of bytes, but we still don't have any storage, so this is fine. Uh, so build one hash. Now we should be able to run a build that starts with something else than the empty hash. So I'm gonna copy this and try on like without this line. Um, just like a different, you know, like a different hash. And it's going to be a vector of, let's say, well, foo bytes vector. Yeah, this, this fails, of course, because this doesn't exist in the in the storage, but if I use the empty hash, which I think is just uh, an empty vector, that would work because this is the empty image reference. So I think we might have to like special case this. I, I don't want people to use, well, people, nobody's actually gonna call it, but now I'm wondering if I want people, you know, this API to allow referring to the empty state as a hash but if the hash is going to be deterministic and also like uh you know pure to calculate then we probably have no choice like we actually need to do this it's not gonna be it's not gonna be like a, an empty vector uh, but um, because you can actually offset stuff and remove it this should give you the same uh, hash so yeah, you will be able to refer refer to an image, uh, to the empty image, this way. Okay, so I'm gonna run the first build, and now we get this hash, and this should give us a successful build. And it does. That's amazing. And it also does like another uh, another build. So the interpreter would be called twice already. Um, yeah, that's pretty nice. We can do this over and over. Um, so I want to see what happens if you run this now, but then we delete the hello key. Yeah, we got the empty system hash. Uh, by the way, all of this is going to end up in tests. Probably property tests as well. 
so you have absurd delete ah. is it though like interpreter actually does that right like it does so on the system state level but yeah i guess this logic is also worth testing like there's enough room for error in here um yeah this is kind of like laws because we don't really need to know what the storage is of the the whole resolver yeah let me just see how long we've been recording um cool so i guess we'll do like half an hour more at most because i'm kind of getting tired surprisingly i know it's 3 a.m but it's still not the time that i would usually be tired at uh, that's actually good news so um yeah i think this is gonna be like a two-part episode kind of uh, i might just have to stop in the middle of something so yeah so we have this uh this last build which is an empty build now if i'm not mistaken if i just do um the same thing with just uh, this absurd, we should get the same hashes here that we did. Now let's see if we can run the build. Uh, well, the hash. So like build to hash. Of course. So this uh, build to hash is actually the same as this. So this is the result for that, the result for this. Um, build one hash. Yeah, so aren't it the same? Yeah, this is the same state actually. Let's let's try to insert something else. Okay, we have hello and hello two. This starts from the first build, so it's an empty one because we removed one of the keys. And hello, hello two is mm, the same as here. No, not really. Wait. Oh yeah, because I'm looking at uh, build two, and this is the empty one. So yeah, so this is supposed to be the same as as this and that. Like that's just build two hash. Um, yeah. So I think it all works. Yeah, it just works together. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we, I have some test ideas here for Socrates Executor. So if you like build something and then uh, flat map to run, no matter what build was, like assuming we, you get a, a correct image. So if you start from an empty image, you can do any sequence of commands. Uh, so like, uh, empty image plus any commands plus build. Well, uh, pipe this to build and then pipe this whole thing to run uh, or flat map. Then uh, you're gonna get um, something, like you're gonna get a value. Yeah, this, this should be successful at this point, but that's not a very useful test. It doesn't tell us what happened. Uh, so I'm thinking to just compare this with the interpreter, but we would have to do resolution inside and so on. So I'm not much of a fan right now. I mean, Yeah, because we would need to uh, do resolution logic on the right-hand side of the test. Yeah, let's just say this is successful. Uh, so this is one test. Um, so maybe build X and then like build X, the same conditions here. Um, yeah, this is just going to be the same thing. Okay, so this is pretty, uh, 
simple, but it kind of depends on how the interpreter and the resolver work. Well, the, the resolver specifically. Uh, it is a property of the executor, but it's not the executor that kind of that actually guarantees that. Uh, so I'm not even sure. Maybe if we if we test the real one, then then yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be a difficult uh, a difficulty that we'll tackle later. Uh, test idea. X like that. This would be it for that part, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, let's define something here. Although I would like to first like deal with the interface. Um, maybe not. Maybe we'll just test first. So which methods are coupled together? Like these two, right? They even have the same <laughs> the same kind of shape. If you look at it. Uh, they take that they are jewels of each other. So yeah, it's kind of like a key value store. It, it, it is going to be a, a key value store under the hood eventually. Hmm. Which is funny because that's what we're designing, right? Like we're designing key value store and the tests of the interpreter are actually like this. Like if we, we have these kind of properties that are really like a key value star. It says it's right here. Uh, but this is actually going to be backed by a key value star. So kind of getting uh, messy and confusing here. Yeah, let's see. Uh, so this whole resolve thing, it only does the lookup, which makes sense. Yeah, I think resolve just belongs in uh, in the executor. What if I move it away? Actually, can this be implemented in there? Let's see. So we just resolve here. Let's try this. Resolve command. We need this. Um, this is also trivial. Look up internal. Now this is going to be what the, what the resolver actually does. So we're going to do look up and it's going to be an F option. I think, yeah. And we're going to get rid of this unknown hash thing uh, in here. I think. Um, so where's the empty hash logic here? Well, now it's here. That's That's annoying. Hmm. We could do a lookup, like make it take a build base, but that's, I don't like it because it, it, what if at some point we have hashes in other places? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not convinced. Um, maybe this wasn't the right place. Okay, so the new idea is that uh, resolve will still exist. But it's not gonna have as many responsibilities. Um, we'll get back to this resolve resolve, and we are gonna bring that method back here, just like this. Yeah, but we'll move everything else somewhere else. So resolve stays. Um, I think it's really important. But these two methods are gonna be somewhere else, and they are gonna be used by resolver. Uh, sorry, <laughs> by resolver. Uh, and by server side executor. Like I, I have no better way, I think. No, not yet. Maybe we'll have like some intermediate layer. Uh, for now, I think this this settles it. So let's just call it something. Uh, so what does, does it do? It it stores system states with hashes. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of like a registry. Yeah, it, it is a registry, so yeah. I'm gonna call it so, and I'm gonna move all, like both of these methods here. Uh, so lookup is gonna be option system state, and this, this looks fine. Um, apply. Now I actually want GitHub Copilot to, to run. 
Come on. Oh, let's save it. Okay, fine. Whatever. Uh, up using uh, re registry. App. And the instance is going to be called. Uh, oh my goodness, this is so. Well, it's similar in spirit to what I would have written, but it's different style. Uh, it also doesn't have the empty hash, so I'm just gonna steal some of this and rename later. So it's gonna be rough based or just in memory, yeah, sure. So we need a rough make, we need UID gen and. Um, Yeah, now that I'm at it, I'm just gonna define hasher as well. Uh, so hash compute hash um, of a system state. Mm. So the registry is gonna do the like call the hasher. Yeah, I think we'll, yeah, I should do this later. So many decisions like this, like we do something and then we roll back. Uh, like this is normal in this kind of work. Uh, this has to be registry. Like I don't expect to get the interface right the first time. I never do. So we're gonna take these two methods in there. Uh, what is wrong with this indent? Huh? Oh yeah, here. It was actually right. What was it? Uh, look up internal. We definitely need that. Okay. And we don't need this. It's gonna be just options, so I don't need look up internal. I can just inline this. There we go. Um. Yeah, this looks okay. I'll get rid of the, these, like all this. Um, this goes away, the map goes away, the effect goes away. We just have a pure resolver, no empty hash. Okay, empty hash is staying apparently, empty system is not. Um, no empty hash. I think I'll just put this here for, for now, so that I can refer to it here. And this is gonna be resolve uh, registry. Mm, resolve, not actually resolve. It's gonna be lookup. Um, registry empty hash. And here we're gonna look up the hash lift to unknown base. That makes sense. And this is gonna be a problem, yeah. So we don't need rough make. We don't need this either now. We just need registry. And we do need mana throw. And we have two un unimplemented methods, which is not good, but not terrible either. You can just uh, just remove them from the interface. So this should be fine now, but the uh, executor will not be fine. I promise you it's not fine uh, if I try to run the tests. That might work, but if we remove the, the blue directories, like the compiled sources, it's gonna fail, of course. So resolver is still a thing. What? What? What is that? That's not the... Oh, oh, I put the resolver. It's actually nested in there. That's so funny. The resolver was now part of the registry. That's, that's so hilarious. Now it's gonna work. Yeah, so save has been moved to the registry. We're gonna use not this one, not this one. Uh, let's just use this, it's the same package, so. Um, registry save. Now here, registry lookup. Mm. You'll notice that run is very, very thin, like it's just a simple forwarder, uh, but eventually we're gonna um, 
we, we might do something more interesting here. So, er, um, unknown base, is that it? No, that's not it. Unknown hash, uh, hash. That seems to work. Now we need a resolver, uh, which is now no longer an effect. So we just created like this, but we need a, a registry. So. Uh, in memory, F. Oh, the resolver needs the registry. That's fine. Right. So with filter is not a member, uh, which is true for sure. Uh, but I thought we were supposed not to see this area anymore. So let me see what happened. Uh, there was, there used to be a, a plugin called, uh, better monadic for. Uh, for Scala. So it's a compiler plugin for Scala to 12 and to 13. Uh, but yeah, source future. Is it? Don't I have that? Yeah, apparently not. Let's try uh, let's try adding Scala, yeah, something like this, but source free one. I think this might be it. Source future was supposed to be deprecated, I think. We'll see. We're gonna stay in SBT for a moment. Okay, it's a bad option, apparently. I'll try 3 0. By the way, we should have like build reload. Um, maybe now? So SBT should tell me that it can reload to build if I change something. What if I remove this? Oh, now it tells me. Okay. So I want to have this in my build. There we go. Yeah, let's bring this back. Wait. Bring this back and also this. And now compile. Okay, that's not a valid option. What about what? Oh, I need to reload first, like, yeah, of course. It's still a bad option, what? Maybe it's just source like this? Oh, that works better. So 3.1 doesn't work. So, uh, sorry, 3.0 doesn't work, 3.1. Technically, we, we are on 3.1, so it should just be like this. Okay, fine, I'll use X Future. Oh, it's source future. That worked. Okay, but now we need this. Rewrite source future migration. Yeah, I, I do have this somewhere, so I, I trust these options. Um, let's add it separately. Or... I can fix the imports, or I can keep this and fix fix the imports. Um, yeah, let's do it. Mm. Missing a comma. Why? Why? Why did it restart SBT? Like, stop it. Um, fine. Yeah, flag source set repeatedly. I, I love this. What if I remove it? Okay, now, now we have different R. So apparently this is not necessary. We're gonna go here and actually import the build again to, to metals this time. So we get a, the correct R. So the problem is that we need a register here and it's not seen. That's a bug. Uh, I have reported it in the past. Uh, to me, it's like a very obvious bug. Apparently, it's not a very important one because it's not being fixed. So I'm just going to do this. I think that's not it. Okay. Um, uh, 
it's something like this. The workaround is to just like insert a line like that somewhere. Okay, that's almost it. Uh, and because this is just a uh, That's not the right definition, but this is just uh, a ref, an I.O., sorry. We need to make it a resource. What's that? And where are these warnings? I thought we did have a rewrite one. Apparently not. I do have rewrite source. What? That's strange, yeah. Is this on in all the projects? Shared server, client, E2E. Yeah, all of them. I don't get this. And I'm definitely too tired to to investigate what's happening there i just hope that the with filter thing is not going to be a problem anymore and what the hell um yeah okay this is a reasonable error where is it okay it's still not a resource you're saying This is a resource though. What? Oh, this is an effect. Yeah, of course. I need to make this a resource as well. And this doesn't need to be one. There we go. Yeah, so basically this doesn't work. This is not visible as an implicit unless we have something in between. So I'm just gonna do this as like unit. And this just makes it work. So that's uh, that's weird, but yeah, it's it's a decent workaround. I mean, I have a high you know high level of what, what I accept and in, in, in things like that, so so it's a decent workaround for me. Uh, there we go. So we have the registry, we have the resolver, um, we have the server side executor. And it's all wiring up together. Let's just make sure that the tests also work. Yep. And I'm gonna move the uh, the registry to a separate file. And now work through the imports to make sure I can remove some of them. Ref resource. No resource is actually used. Uh, unknown base. Unknown hash. Yep. No, same for the resolver. Uh, maybe this. Maybe ref, maybe resource. UID gen. This is useful, but this is not. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, I think we got them all. Or maybe here. Yeah, why did this ever use this? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, it's still here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's here because we need to construct all the dependencies. Uh, yeah, that's the current state of it. Makes sense. So I'm gonna... Yeah, should I take this? I think we are actually due to like finish for today. Uh, so I'm just gonna make a feature branch for this, and um, yeah, we're gonna call it uh, feature registry. And yeah, what we did here, I don't think these options work as they are supposed to, at least not here. I'm not sure why, but they don't. So I'm gonna see, hopefully this is enough, like just source future. Uh, maybe I can actually do this as one flag. That's much better if I can. Let's import again.
Okay. Yeah, it's it's fine. Cool. So we have this. Uh, let's review that if again. So we introduced the registry, but we split the. No, we didn't even split the resolver. Uh, the resolver basically got back its its old interface. Uh, it has a monad throw. Does it actually use that? It does. Um, Yeah, I think it's a decent chunk of work for this time that we spent here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just comment that. So, introduce registry. Okay. So, yeah, this is gonna sit on this branch until I uh, finish it up in the next. Um, probably in the next episode. Uh, so yeah, just to sum up, we uh, did quite a lot today, I think, given the the time. Uh, so we defined the resolver interface. Uh, it ended up being a function from the the build to a resolver build. So basically, just one part of what made the whole um, server side executor. Uh, we gave it the ability to resolve any build, not just the base build. Uh, so for the empty image, uh, like builds starting with the empty image, uh, we are looking up what the empty hash means. Uh, yeah, to be honest, like empty image could be like it could stop being a thing, even in the client. Like the client could just eliminate this kind of thing at parsing time, just replace it with the empty hash. Uh, but to be honest, I find this uh, possibly more flexible. We'll see. Uh, let's just keep it this way for now. Um, then we have... Uh, so, so this is what happens when we have the empty image. But if we have a reference to an image, uh, we will look it up. Also, eventually, when if we have any tags later, we'll also use the registry for it. So yeah, look up by hash. That, that's the thing now. Um, so something that has been built once, it will be able to uh, get it later by, by the same hash, as long as the application is running. But uh, do we actually have a server? We do. So I guess we could try running this. We also have the E2E -E test, but yeah. Let's just run the server uh, real quick. So, AT80. Um, I don't remember the interface anymore. Uh, let me just open the protocol. So we have build. Uh, it's a build. It's a post. No, it's a put. Um, and we will send a build, which is the base. Uh, let's start with the empty image. We have no choice. And we have the commands. Actually, let's just send an empty uh, an empty list. Okay, that doesn't work. Oh, yeah, I used the wrong syntax, I think. Uh, or did I? I haven't used JQ in a while, apparently. Well, uh, HPI. Um, if I send it, oh, wait. If I'm sending it as a string, maybe the... It's the same thing. No, it's inside the string. Oh. Isn't it the syntax? Well, now it, I need to check the manual. Uh, so, I could swear this is a thing. Yeah, raw JSON fields. Isn't this exactly what I did? Oh, but this isn't valid JSON, is it? Um, 
space is empty image. This has to be like an empty object. That was the problem. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, so commands. What? Uh, search build. Do we have a prefix? Oh, we do. We have an API. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we got a response, uh, the empty hash. Um, we should be able to run the empty hash, by the way. So run, this is probably a post. Uh, it's definitely a post. And we can run just a hash, which is the body. Uh, it has a value. Let's send the empty array. Yeah, that worked. So let's run some other build. And that's going to be, uh, let's just do one command. So something like, um, opsert, uh, key, hello, value, world. I think this looks okay. Okay, we got, oh, so I didn't expect this to be so long. It's going to be problematic to send this, but I'll try. Let's do run and I hope I can do this. Yeah. It worked. So yeah, so we got the, the value back. So clearly there is some memory inside there. Uh, also, if we try to um, post to the build endpoint again, uh, we'll get the same bytes every time. And if I change something, uh, we we'll get some other bytes. Yeah. Eventually we're gonna expose like registry size and like registry listing, uh, the stuff that we have. Uh, that's gonna be pretty cool. Also, we should think about some like other representation of this because it's massively inefficient. Like this is just, <laughs> just bytes concatenated. Like uh, even the string representation would be more optimal than this, like far less, less uh, space. I think. Yeah, because every one of these would be a character. So yeah, anyway, uh, this, this definitely works. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And we have some logs here. So yeah, so this is what we did today. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, this episode. Uh, in the next one, we will finish this up, uh, clean up, uh, add some tests, like proper test suite for everything we did here. And we'll consider some next steps and maybe even start on them. Uh, the next video is probably going to be Advent of Code. Um, I'm going to actually focus on like, in the solutions, in, in the descriptions of the solutions, I'm actually going to show more uh, of the interesting Scala features and like libraries and techniques that I used more than the solution, like the problem itself. So I think the next ones are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, more so than the previous ones. So yeah, I encourage you to just uh, catch up on alternative code and my videos from that period, especially the later ones, and uh, wait for the next uh, episodes. As for plans for this year, yeah, we'll talk about that later in a different episode. So thanks for watching. Again, I hope you have a great day, great night, whatever time it is at your place, and I'll see you in the next episode.